Record on. Okay, so the last talk homework assignment. Mm. Most of you sent in your homework assignment dealing with specific, non-specific congregation, um, personal, um, and so forth and so on. Um, what I um, I'm still looking at some of those. If you haven't had a response, because I'm still looking at it, I have a lot on my desk slash plate right now because some of you are doing this and monsters in the mind. And so it's, it's a lot, but uh, be patient and we will definitely get that grade if you have not seen a grade as of yet. But if you do not see a grade by next uh, Wednesday, please contact me. That means I must have missed because I should be done. I'm looking to be done everything by Tuesday of next week. So give me, now tonight I kind of want to go over some things. Last week was a very powerful class. It was so powerful. I listened to it a while ago and I posted it on my Facebook post uh, um, page. And so, um, but this week I kind of want to go over some things and, um, and so we're starting here. And this is page 37, I do believe. Yeah. And you're doing, okay, prophetic orientation. And usually we're talking about orientation, we're going over some basic things. Because next week, uh, well, this is, this is the this is week four, I believe. This is week yes. four. Okay. Uh -huh. So next week we will be preparing for tests. So this is the time that we want to go over some basic things. Now, as I heard uh Sister Thelma saying that there, there's some things that she just read in the book, and I pre-warned everybody, there's some stuff that he says that that's little, little I don't agree with, and some things I don't know what you're talking about at all. So, but um so but anyway, but I, I'm I'm picking, so if I'm skipping. I have no choice because some things, again, is just, and I'm trying to be very, very kind. Oh, Lord have mercy. Okay. Um, okay. So it says, what is prophecy? Okay. I mean, we talked about this before. Okay. But I just want to go over it. But this is what I'm looking for now. I want you to get to a place where you can start remembering your answers. And, and uh, even though you write them down, I want you to be able to tell me what prophecy is. This is what I'm going over. I believe that at, when we repeat things, you're more apt to remember things. Okay. When we repeat, you're more apt to remember. It says, what is prophecy? It's, then it goes on to say, the word of the King Lemieux the, it says, the prophecy that his mother taught him. Um, so he gave us this scripture here. And what that scripture got to do with giving us the definition of prophecy, I don't know. <laughs> but 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 let me make something out of it because this is what I have to do a lot. I have to sometimes I have to make stuff out of nothing. So, but here, what I like is that prophecy was important uh, even during that time. That the mother felt like uh, that this was something that he needed to understand and to know. But this also confirms something that I that I oftentimes teach that prophecy is more about understanding God's word than prognosticating. Um, now here, I'm getting a sense as I read this, this is more about her teaching him the word of God, more so than teaching him something that, that as, as supposed to kind of pass in his or her life. But that's just my sense. But it goes on to say prophecy, uh, says um, phonics, uh, burden. So that which is carried, uh, cargo, utterance, and or oracle. It said prophecy must be taught. And I agree. It says here, for to one it is given the spirit, um, the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same spirit, to another faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healing by the same spirit, to another working of miracles, to, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues to another, uh, the interpretation of time, but all these work is that one and the same self spirit dividing to every man severally as he will. So what we have here, let's, let's take a good look at a lot of these things that he mentioned here. He starts off with prophetic gifts, which is the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge. They are a part of the prophetic gift. Even faith is a part of the pro uh, prophetic gift when we're talking about the gift of faith. So here he's speaking to another person, the gift of faith, and he's talking about what's given. 
Um, this, when you're giving faith, you're, you're talking about giving the, the gift, the gift of faith by the same spirit. He's also talking about the gift of healing. All these things are, are manifestations of the anointing, various gifts that God give on, unto us. To another discerning of spirits. Again, one thing that he says here says to another, to another, diverse tongues and to another interpretation tongue. It lets us know that everybody don't have these gifts. He divides various gifts into the house of God. Again, so no one person has them all. And so I, I oftentimes warn uh, people to be very careful about someone that seems to have all the gifts. That's not what God works speak a uh, works a uh, word speaks towards. His word speaks towards he divides his gifts among the people. He divides. When people say, my pastor got it all, no, he or she don't have it all. That would not make a functional church. Because if you have it all, then you do it all then. You don't need me. You don't need my tithe. You don't need my offering. If you got it all like that, then hey, welcome to it. But we don't have it all. That's why we need one another. This is why the Bible breaks down in the house of God. There are some that are the foot, the toes, the leg. And so we need one another. There are many parts according to the scripture of the body of Christ. It says, a uh, prophet of Greek, a discourse emanating from um, divine inspiration and declaring the purpose of God, whether by reproving, admonishing the wicked, or comforting the afflicted, or revealing hidden things, especially by foretelling future events. Now, write down that word foretelling. Foretelling is another word that we use and we learn it for in our um, interpretation of scripture. Foretelling is being predictive. F-O-R-E, foretelling. Now, foretelling, F-O-R-T-H, is when you're more so preaching or giving a word of comfort, a word of inspiration. So you have foretelling, which is being predictive. And you have foretelling, F-O-R-T-H, which is being more comforting when you're speaking words of uh, correction or right thing this nature, things that are more uh, associated to biblical scriptures than anything else. Okay, so that so that's clearly what we want to get out of uh, out of that. Now, one of the things that I clearly said that I want um, is that we understand that majority of the New Testament teaching is forth telling F O R T H more so uh, the, the preaching and the teaching and the comforting, the exhortation of God's word. And so now, yeah, but he breaks this down again. He said the Greek, when you look it down, it means to uh, declaring the purpose of God, whether by reproving and admonishing the wicked. Now, can we get, um, without a prophet, can we get, again, um, someone to declare the purpose of God? Sure. Anyone that, that can read the word of God can read the purpose of God. The purpose of God is throughout his word that has nothing to do with foretelling the future. So prophecy is someone declaring the purpose of God. Every time you pick up God's word and you quote the scripture and give it to someone, you're declaring the purpose of God. You're declaring the will of God by declaring the word of God. Okay, but... Again, there are times that God will foretell. He will tell you about some, some future events, but we don't want to get hung up on future events because as I said on last week, if you get hung up on someone giving you future events, who are you going to marry, uh, the next car you're going to get, uh, the next uh, time money's coming in, then that's no more than a witch. If that's all you're getting, if that's predominantly what you're getting, then more than likely you're uh, someone that's confused about a ministry could be dipping or dabbing into witchcraft. Okay, excuse me, I went a little bit too far. Okay, it says prophecy is a noun and prophecy is a verb. It says to prophesy means to speak the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Okay, say so why is prophecy important? You know what he, he, he does here? He, 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 he says prophecy is a noun, prophecy is a verb, but he doesn't really break it down. It's according, um, it's according to how you use it, the word whether it's a noun, if I'm talking about prophecy, I'm talking about as a noun, if I'm speaking about what prophecy does, I'm speaking as a uh, as a verb. Okay, so one um, is specifically talking about, it and the other is talking about what it does. So, okay, so uh, it says why is that before? Uh, I said the one edify, exhort, comfort, convict, convince. I'm amazed that this is something I've been using for years. That um, the word of God is meant to convince, convict, and convert, but He does have her come uh, convict and to convince. 
Um, but these are things we want you to know. These are things that I, I would expect you to know. Uh, if someone asks you, what's the purpose of a prophecy? You should be able to say edify, comfort, and exhort. We, we don't mention it. Um, I would say about six times so far in this class in four weeks. What in the world is that going across the screen? Ooh. <laughs> Do y'all see that? Yeah, it's green. Right on the screen. <laughs> I didn't do that. Maybe get ready to crash and shut down on you. Wow. You can still be doing it. Yeah. Yes. Damn okay. it. Let me say this. Um, I just got class shut down. <laughs> I'm going to email everybody concerning your assignment. And my assignment that we're preparing for, we're preparing for, oh my gosh, just say, we're preparing for the um for the test. And I want you to just go over your notes really carefully. But I am totally shocked. This is Unless my unless my computer is possessed or something. <laughs> it's crazy. Some more. Yeah, but I've never seen anything like this before. Jesus. Okay. Um wow. I plan to recording this because I'm gonna have to send this to a tech and let them see what it's doing. Okay, I'm changing the pages and it's still there. I don't okay. Um Okay, you know what? I'm going to stop. I'm going to have to, because um, this is it's deadly doing it, and it's really crazy. I deeply do apologize. Um, hold on a minute. Let me, let me go up to where I want. I want you to continue reading. Um, hold on a minute. Like, I want you to read throughout who can prophesy, okay? Read um, throughout this. Who can prophesy? Read First Corinthians. Read up to that, from, from page 37 up to, hold on a minute. Let me. But this is page 39. Right here, right here. You can stop right here. What page? What page are we at now? 39. 39. Okay. Uh -huh. Wow. This is really crazy. So it's just two pages, right? 39 and uh 39 through 40. Uh-huh. Really okay. Funny. Yeah. 39 through 40. Okay, and I'll get back with you. This uh okay. wow. I can, I've never seen nothing like this in my life. And I'm I, I'm my mouse around my mouse is not doing because you can probably see my mouse moving. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, it's doing some crazy stuff. Wow. Okay, so let's pray our way out. And I'm gonna rebuke my computer. <laughs> oh, this is so crazy. Follow right now, Jesus. At least you try it. Said again. I said at least you try it. Yeah, I knew that I had some problems where my camera was jumping. Um, but okay, hold on, I'm gonna see something else. Okay, I don't see it now, but now my computer screen is jumping. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm starting to wonder if there's a problem with the program with Zoom. Ours isn't jumping. Maybe my Zoom. Okay, what I'm gonna do, we'll be back again next Wednesday. Um, I'm going to um, delete my Zoom and upload a new Zoom and hopefully that'll resolve the issue because you guys aren't having problem with yours. Um, let me see here. Let me stop this thing from jumping all over the place. Okay, so it's not doing it when I do that. No. It's just the visual. Yeah, so it's just something going on with the camera maybe. Um why would the camera be making lines all over the computer? That's really crazy. Dr. Short, take it to the technician. Take yeah, it to the technician. I, I just have to tell him if you had to do some deliverance, then not. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. That made me a little nervous in them lines come across there. That sounds a little spooky. Like somebody else is going to be boring on your screen. <laughs> wow. The blood of Jesus. Good Lord, have mercy. Throw some all on this computer. <laughs> <laughs> That wouldn't mess it up. Okay, saints of God, give me a call tomorrow. I should be available most of the day tomorrow. If you need any help or have any questions, comments, or statements that we did not get a chance to get to. Now, I do want to address this. I heard you guys talking a while ago about your paper for monsters. I, do, I got a couple of things I, I need to say. Um, I really didn't want you to go over 11 pages, but after you do and you can't help it, go ahead, go ahead and keep that because what we're trying to do, we're trying to get you involved into understanding essay writing. And the more you do, the better you'll get. 
Because what you're going to probably is going to happen, you're probably going to eventually need those 11 papers, especially for those of you that are just on the soldiers or the bachelor's level, because you can take those 11 pages. If you have to do a master thesis, well, you already got it halfway started, halfway done. Just use the paper that you're doing right now to, with the almost 20 papers. And then when it's co come time for you to do your master thesis, you can use that to finish your master's. Most master thesis is usually 50 pages, 25 to 50 pages. Well, you have yours already started. Let's suppose you say you decide to go ahead and do your get your doctorate. Well, guess what? You already got it started because you got you got your 10, 20 from here. You, you're going for your master's thesis. You go get your 50 from there. And then if you go to get your doctorate and you have to do a, a dissertation, you got half your dissertation done already. So hold on. Anytime you do an essay, just hold on to it. You never know when you need it again. Won't there be um, a confusion as far as the subjects? Well, you know, you make you, your if you're doing an essay, sometimes they'll have you to just write an essay of your own free will. So if you already started one on the prophetic or whatever you're doing it one on mind, so the mind, whatever, just continue to work on that. Just continue to to do that. Uh, just keep that same thing going all the way through till you get to your doctorate. Because even with your dissertation, they don't tell you what to write about. Most of the time, they tell you to pick uh, a desired topic of your own. Mm -hmm. so you, you're usually, but they have to approve it, and which I would, because I'm telling you, it's just okay to do it. So you can, you can, again, so this, so even though you're going over and what I, what I want, in the long run, it's going to help you, help you out a whole lot because it'd be less writing you have to do later on. Okay. Okay. Any questions, comments, or statements? Apostle uh, Moore, haven't heard from you at all. And who else is on that I haven't heard? Who's E? I see E's iPhone. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, I, I know who it is. Okay. Um, okay. Apostle Moore, I guess you could be at work or, or at church. So, okay. Okay. So, um, wow. Can I? Can you allow me to do one more time? Let me. Let me go back on here again. I'm a half of a technician myself. Now it's not there, right? Nope. Nope. I'm still. <laughs> yeah, I'm still thinking it's the software. I think it's the software, but anyway, we'll we'll close out. So you got your homework assignments. Please go ahead and finish get those assignments done. Use this time to get your assignments done and complete. And if, again, if you don't have this class assignment done, um, please finish it because I need to get it so I can get it graded because I have all the other assignments that's coming in right behind us, the ones that deal with the monster. And I do want to say that um, January the 24th, we're going to do an orientation uh, for hellology january the 24th it's on a tuesday night i need you for a half an hour we're doing uh an orientation on the next course on this hellology um i will be emailing you guys next week about how to order your book where to order your book and but in the meantime we will not start class without you at least having an ebook i will make sure everyone have an ebook of hellology i think we got a lot of interested people I, if you go onto my facebook page i did speak about it today so write that date down uh january 24th seven o'clock uh hellology orientation uh from dr short could you spell that name? Because I'm, I'm I'm hearing hellology. Is it H E L L? Yeah, H E L L slash O L O G Y. O L O G Y. Hellology. Yes, it has to be the slash because it's really two words I'm bringing out because there is no word that says hellology without the slash. Okay. So the slash has to the be. Next class, right? Say that again. This is the next class. Yes, ma'am. Uh huh. So it, start, it starts on January 24th? Yes, we're doing an orientation then. Okay. I'm, I'm going to defend why this course needs to be taken because, again, this is something that most school of theology do not do a study on hell at all. So I'm going to talk about the purpose um, in which this course should be taught, why it should be taught. Um, and I did a little bit of that today. If you go to my Facebook page, you're going to see I did a little five-minute present of uh, defense of the study of, of hellology. Um, and so, um, but it's been well, very well received, very well received. And so um, you have any comments, again, just feel free to give me a call. 
All right, God bless you, saints of God. Let's pray our way out. Father, right now in Jesus' name, we thank you for your goodness and your kindness. We thank you for all you've done. We thank you for all you're doing. We thank you for the multitude of blessings you have bestowed upon us. And God, you will continue to strengthen where we can build us where we're torn down. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And God help me get a new computer. Amen. <laughs> God bless you, everybody. Amen. Have a smile. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night.